श्री विद्या चैनल और एन ऑफिशियल मैं हूँ आपके साथ धर्मेंद्र सिंह ये जो सत्र है बड़ा ही कमाल का बहुत ही इंटरेस्टिंग है क्योंकि यहाँ पर हम बात करने वाले हैं लीनियर इक्वेशंस इन टू वेरिएबल्स पार्ट वन यानी मैथमेटिक्स क्लास नाइन के विद्यार्थियों के लिए कोई क्वेश्चन है कोई रिलेटेड प्रश्न है दुविधा दुविधा है डायलिमा है आप कॉल कर सकते हैं हमारे टेलीफोन नंबर पर देखिए अपने टेलीविजन स्क्रीन पर डबल एट डबल जीरो फोर फोर जीरो फाइव फाइव नाइन यहाँ आप अपने प्रश्न पूछ सकते हैं इसके अलावा आप मेल कर सकते हैं ऑफिशियल मेल आईडी फॉर क्लास नाइन स्टूडेंट विच इज़ डी टी Of course, to watch this program live, you may tune in PM E Vidya channel number nine, and also you may tune in the NCERT official YouTube for this. You need to subscribe this. I think you have done already been done this job. Okay, uh, now it's time to introduce our expert. Please welcome Miss Deepthi Mathur, the Mothers International Schools, New Delhi. I welcome you, Miss Mathur. Good evening. Thank you so much. राइट सो लीनियर इक्वेशन इन टू वेरिएबल्स पार्ट वन की आज हम बात कर रहे हैं थोड़ा सा इस टॉपिक को आप ब्रीफ करें फिर हम आगे की तरफ जाएं। सो लीनियर इक्वेशन इन टू वेरिएबल्स टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू लीनियर इक्वेशन इन टू वेरिएबल्स दैट मीन्स इक्वेशन विच हैव टू अनोन वैल्यूज फिर हम इसके वी विल ट्राई एंड फाइंड आउट द सोल्यूशन ऑफ दीज इक्वेशन एल्जेब्रिकली and then we'll plot these solutions on the graph paper and we will observe the geometrical representation of these solutions so basically we are connecting algebra with geometry that is the interesting part of this topic all right let's move further now all right so uh, our students already have some idea about uh, linear equations in one variable but we are going to first have a little recap so what is linear equation in one variable equations where the expressions which form the equation contain only one variable and the highest power of the variable is equal to 1 so as you can see over here there is a linear equation why it is called linear equation because it has only one variable and we see the power of this variable is equal to 1 which is the highest power so this makes it a linear equation in one variable now others other terms this is a constant term this is a constant term but the term which has variable the variable has the highest power one so that's why it becomes a linear equation in one variable now let's take some more examples suppose there's a question you can make a puzzle also like this what should be added to one to get four so we can write x plus 1 is equal to 4 let's take some more examples One subtracted from twice a number gives five, so we can write it as two y minus one is equal to five. So one subtracted from twice a number here number is an unknown value, so we can represent it with y. So two y minus one becomes equal to five. Let's take one more example. find each side of a square whose perimeter is equal to 36 so if the perimeter is 36 we have to find the side of the square the length of the side of the square so if we that is the unknown value so we can write it as 4a is equal to 36 where a is the unknown value it is the variable now let's try and solve one such linear equation so 3 added to 2 times a number gives 0 find the number so what we do let the number be x so by the problem 2x plus 3 is equal to 0 then we get 2x is equal to minus 3 and we get x is equal to minus 3 by 2 so we see the value of x is minus 3 by 2 x has only one value so that means we have a unique solution to this equation 
So the linear equation in one variable have a unique solution. That is one and only one solution. So therefore, its solution, which is also called the root of the equation, is minus 3 by 2. Now let's try and geometrical, uh, geometrically represent this solution. So we have a number line of real numbers. And we can mark this particular point as minus 3 by 2. This is a number line which has, and we know the line is made up of infinite points. So this point is minus 3 by 2. Well, Ms. Mathur, I have a question over here because as I can see in this picture, there is only one or two or three ETC numbers, but not yes. other numbers. Why is that? Yes, that is because this number line has infinite points and this is the line of in of real numbers. So, but if we try, so if we take 0 and 1, between this also, these are two integers and between this also there are infinite points. Mm -hmm. But we cannot mention each and every point. It will be very difficult. So we will have to, if we magnify only this area, then we can tell more numbers between 0 and 1. But then it will become, uh, it will not look very neat right now. So in order to show minus 3 by 2, we are showing only the integers and not each and every point. That, But it is not that each and every point over here, which are infinite points, represent a real number. But to keep, make it neat, and so that it is convenient to understand, we are representing only the integers on this number line of real numbers. That we have to remember, the number line has infinite points, and each point on the number line represents a real number. I hope it's understood. Right. Thank you so much. Let's move further now. So now we come to today's topic that is linear equations in two variables. Now, again, we will have to take few examples. So linear equation in two variables means two unknowns. So let's consider an example. We have a question paper. And in that question paper, we have word problems. We have multiple choice questions also. And the total number of questions are 25. So what we have, what we see from this question, that there are two unknown values. That means we do not know how many word problems are there. We do not know how many multiple choice questions are there. But we know the total number of questions are 25. So how do we represent it as an equation? We can write, let the number of word problems be x and let the number of multiple choice of questions be y. So what is the required equation now? x plus y is equal to 25. So this is now the linear equation in two variables. But we also see that the power of the variable is 1. Over here, the highest power of the variable over here is also 1. So this is a linear equation in two variables. Let's take one more example. In a one-day international cricket match between India and Sri Lanka played in Nagpur, two Indian batsmen together score 176. So there are two batsmen playing. We know the total score of the batsmen is 176. But we do not know what is the score of either of the batsmen. So what we do in this case, let the number of runs scored by one of the batsmen be x and the number of runs scored by the other batsmen be y. So the required equation becomes x plus y is equal to 176. So again, this is a linear equation in two variables. Let's take one more example, which all of you are familiar with, that is the relationship between the circle 
and the the diameter of the circle and the radius of the circle we know if we take diameter as d we take radius as r then we can write d is equal to 2r so this is also a linear equation it is in two it has two variables one is d one is r we do not know the value of t or r right so it is also a linear equation in two variables so these are some more examples why we have some more examples like we can say the variable can be taken as s the variable can be taken as t it is not necessary that we have to take always x and y so variable can be u also the variable can be v also that these are all examples of linear equations in two variables but like you see over here it is 1.2 s plus 3t is equal to 5 over here we are writing 3 first constant term here and equal to 2x minus 7y so we should have some general form of linear equations so the general form of linear equations in two variables is ax plus by plus c is equal to 0 this is a generalized form of linear equation in two variables and this is accepted across everywhere now if this is the general form ax plus by plus c is equal to 0 then what a b c have to be real numbers any real number and a cannot be a zero and b cannot be a zero then ax plus by plus c is equal to zero is a general form of linear equations in two variables now we have written all we have this chart where we have to identify what is the value of a what is the value of b and what is the value of c so we have say for example we have the first equation we have put here the second equation that we learned over here the third equation over here fourth equation over here we have put now we are putting it in the form ax plus by plus c is equal to 0 so we can put this equation in this form so what is the value of a here a becomes equal to 1 the coefficient of x a is equal to 1 b is also over here 1 and our c becomes minus 25 now this is also over here also this is we have converted this equation into this form that is the general form so d we can write it as we take 2r on the other side left hand side it becomes d minus 2r plus 0 is equal to 0 so what is a here a is equal to 1 b is equal to minus 2 and c is equal to 0 any questions so far is it all clear is it all clear yeah it's so all far? clear no, please keep moving we all have uh, we have 8 minutes left now i would say so you need to finish your content very early we have 8 minutes left okay yes so if this is clear what is the value of a what is the value of b and what is the value of c then let's move further so solutions of linear equations in two variables now because there are two variables so there will be a value of x there will be a value of y also so there will be two values so this solution is written as an ordered pair that means first we'll write the value of x then we'll write the value of y now ordered pair uh, pair cartesian plane all the students have some idea about it from the previous chapters so let's come to come further there is an equation 2x plus y is equal to 0 what we are doing over here is we are finding the solution of a linear equation in two variables algebraically then we are going to see what is the geometric representation of that so now let's substitute first x is equal to 0 so
So if we substitute x is equal to 0 in this equation, we get 2 into 0 plus y is equal to 6. So the value of y becomes 6. Again, we substitute, if we substitute the value of x as 1, we get 2 into 1 plus y is equal to 6. y becomes equal to 4. If we substitute y is equal to 0, we get the value as x is equal to 3. Then if we substitute y is equal to 2 and we substitute the value over here, then we get the value of x is equal to 2. What it means, we have found the value of x and y algebraically. Let's put it in a table. We put it in a table. We write the values of x here and we write the values of y here. Now, this is also we form a con uh, we follow a convention that in a table, when we have to put the values of x and y in a table, we first put the values of x and then we put the values of y. Now, again, I have a so question yeah. for you, Ms. Madhur. Is it necessary yes. to write x coordinate first and y coordinate after x coordinate? All right. So now we can write this as ordered pair. Now solutions of these given equations, we are writing zero. The first one, x is equal to zero. Second, y is equal to six. So we are writing it as zero, six. We are writing the x coordinate first and we are writing the y coordinate after the x coordinate. Now again, this is the convention that we follow. We follow this convention across the world so that there's no con confusion. If I'm teaching anyone, in any part of the country, there will be no confusion. Everybody knows that in the ordered pair, the first number that appears is the x coordinate or abscissa, we call it. And the second number that appears over here is the y coordinate, that is the ordinate, that is the y coordinate. So this is the ordered pair, and this is the convention we follow. First, we write the x coordinate or abscissa. Second, we write the y coordinate or we call it the other name for this is ordinate. So now all this, the concept which relates the algebraic, uh, the algebra with geometry is coordinate geometry and it is a very, very interesting concept. It, it is the part of geometry where position of points on the plane is described using an ordered pair of numbers like we just saw. So coordinate geometry is also used to locate the positions of aircraft. If you in, in we play games and if we have to find the exact location of the object, then we use coordinate geometry. If we have to find a particular place in, on our mobile phones, and our, uh, on our computers, we use Google Maps. That also takes help of coordinate geometry. Just three minutes left now, Ms. Madhu. All right. So now over here, how do we locate uh, the red? We have to find locate the red color tree. So how do we locate it? We'll say we have divided this entire, say it's a garden of trees. So this is the B column and this is the third column. So we say this particular red color tree, we will not go like this or we will not go like this. We'll say it will go straight up. That is the B column and it is the third row. We'll not go like this or like this. The easiest way to find it is that this particular red tree is in the uh, B column and it is in the third row. So this concept is also used over here where we have longitudes and latitudes. If we know the, long, the value of longitudes and langu longitudes and latitudes of a particular place in the world, then we can locate it in our globe also. So this is how the Cartesian plane was developed. Keeping all this in mind, the Cartesian plane was developed by a very famous uh, French mathematician called Descartes. So this is our Cartesian plane. Should I explain? We have time. 
about the Cartesian plane? Can yes, I you may go now. We have just just uh, two minutes left now, not more than two minutes left. So, the Cartesian plane. In this, we are having, as you can see, we have a number line, we have a horizontal number line, and we have a vertical number line. Now, this is also a convention that the horizontal number line of real numbers we call x-axis and the vertical number line we call it as a y-axis they are both they are kept x-axis and y-axis are kept perpendicular to each other so the zero of the x-axis the zero of the y-axis meet at a point and this is called the origin of this entire Cartesian plane. So we are talking of, when we are talking of Cartesian plane, we are talking of two dimensional, 2D shapes. So right now, so this is the, the entire, the X axis and the Y axis, which are perpendicular to each other. They divide the uh, entire plane into four equal parts. First quadrant, the second quadrant, the third quadrant and the fourth quadrant. So we are going to now look at, we can already see all the values over here will have X coordinate as positive and Y coordinate as also positive. In the second quadrant, we'll have Y axis, we'll have the X axis as negative and the Y axis, the Y coordinate of any point over here will be positive. In this particular quadrant, which is the third quadrant, we will have the X coordinate negative and the Y coordinate will also be negative. And in the fourth, we will have the X coordinate as positive and the Y coordinate as negative. So this is how we lose. We have some points over here. I think that's a great timing because uh, our time is finished now. We cannot continue this session ahead. But thank you so much, Ms. Mathur, for your valuable time. We appreciate this. Thank you so much once again for joining thank us. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank Wish you so much, all the viewers who so were watching this program through NCERT official and also NPME Vidya channel. Next is a webinar on various IC ICT tools after a short break. So don't go anywhere. Stay connected.